As of the uploading of this video, we are less than a week away from the three year anniversary of my first challenge run. I would have just said my first ever video, but the ten or so of you who were here beforehand may remember the videos that used to be on the channel. Anyway, to celebrate three years since the shield bashing run, or more specifically since I was suggested this on Twitter the other week, follow me on Twitter by the way, it's now time to find out can you beat Skyrim by only bow bashing. What is bow bashing? Simply put, it's the bow's equivalent of a shield bash. It can momentarily stun an enemy to give you time to create some distance, or to quickly fire another arrow before being attacked. Just like the shield, as the bow bash was never intended to be used as the sole method of attacking, it does very little damage, much lower than the shield bashing in fact, and it takes a sizable amount of stamina to boot. It's terrible is what I am saying, but not to worry, I have an idea to make it less so. And no, it's not the restoration loop alchemy glitch, I've actually never even messed around with that on a casual playthrough, so I'm not going to use it here. Well, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Naturally, you would think that since I'm using a bow that a wood elf would be the way to go, but you would be wrong. Bashing gets the block skill up and bow bashing damage is only affected by the base damage of the bow you're using, so what it does before you have any perks or upgrades. For that reason alone, I am going with the orc. They get an extra few points in the block right off the bat, plus let's not pretend like their berserk rage ability isn't just the absolute best thing in the world for any single run involving a weak weapon. Now, some of you may say that a red guard would have been a very good choice for the adrenaline rush power and this insane stamina recovery. And while that is certainly true, I can just offset the stamina problem with potions, or more likely, vegetable soup. Yes, it's more than likely going to be soup time again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it after all. I came up with a decently punny name that in retrospect would have fitted an Argonian much better. The Helgen section plays out as normal and I go with Hadvar so I can get out faster thanks to having the keys for the gate. As I have left Hadvar in the dust and cannot attack until I get a bow, I can't actually get one of the long bows off of the Stormcloaks. It's not a huge deal as 1. It is the absolute worst bow in the game, and 2. I can easily get one Riverwood. I made sure to take the Warrior Stone as every little bit helps to increase the block skill just a little bit faster. When I make it to Riverwood I sell everything I don't need to get just enough money to buy a hunting bow from Alvor. It's still awful, but I'm at the beginning of the run. Beggars can't be choosers. I spend some time searching around town for all the ingredients so I can make a few bowls of vegetable soup as well. I understand that it lasts for 12 minutes, but I already know that it's going to take an eternity to bash even one enemy to death at this stage, so the longer I can do it the better. Heading for Bleak Falls Barrow as I have nothing to lose, and my very first encounter is of course this wolf. I could describe in great detail how I'm feeling about all of this right now, but I think the minuscule amount of the wolf's health bar that disappears with each hit does a much better job of conveying the situation than my words ever could. It takes about a full minute of straight bashing to take it down. Sure, that doesn't seem like a lot, but this is essentially a tutorial friendly creature. I am going to be in for a world of hurt with something like a dragon. The one bright spot of the bash is much like its shield counterpart, it does stun indefinitely if I do time it right. Seeing how I am chugging down on soup, that means I am good to go for 12 straight minutes of uninterrupted bashing. Which, honestly, is fairly decent. When fighting a single enemy. As the bandits further up the path so graciously demonstrated, the instant another human or creature enters the fight, I'm screwed. The shield I used in that original video at least had a bleed effect on it that stacked, so I could just wait for it to do the work for me. That's not an option this time I'm afraid, therefore the only way to make this more manageable is to increase my damage. I figured one way to do that was to trim up my block skill to 50 and take the deadly bash perk for 5 times more damage, although to be fair I think it's less if it's not a shield, so it may actually be closer to 3 or 4 times. Regardless, it's what I needed and the best way to do that was to pay for lessons. Injada and Yorvaskar will teach me once she's finished beating up her co-workers. Problem is, I don't have the money for that, again, fresh start. There is the option of free lessons to a degree if you have her as a follower and just take the money back after you pay for the lesson, but of course she isn't available as one until after you have finished the companion's quest line. That was my next goal then I suppose, but I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to output enough damage to get past the test with Vilgus, so it was back to square one. I swear it feels like I'm going in circles here. As a last ditch effort I began heading for Lost Vilgus. Even at level one there are some death lords in there with ebony weapons, so if one of them has a bow, 
that will be my best option for the time. Good news, on the way there I fought another wolf, and managed to increase my block skill to 21. Only 29 more levels to go before we get the perk that makes this thing even slightly viable. Let's keep this next part brief, as ultimately it was a waste of time. When I reached my destination I attempted to fight the frost trolls, their natural health regen made it so I was unable to kill them, counterpoint though, they may be a good source of block XP if I can keep them stunned indefinitely. There are multiple sections of this place, one of which leads to a single small room, housing the Death Lord with an ebony greatsword. He will more than likely two-shot me, if not just straight up one shot, but fortunately for me, he is for whatever reason insistent on starting the fight with a shout, and due to their longer than normal startup time, it leaves me in a very good position to once again get free levels. He wasn't the one with the bow though, so just like the trolls, I left him for the time being. After searching around, I found the way that I believe led to the archer, however it was filled with other Draugr, and like before, fighting more than one enemy at a time, let alone multiple enemies who outlevel me, was just not a good idea. At this stage, I was very nearly out of options when it finally came to me. It's 2023, so I am currently playing the Anniversary Edition of Skyrim, which means I should have access to all of the Creation Club items. And wouldn't you know it, one of the earliest quests you can get is in Whiterun, and rewards you with a pretty powerful bow. Okay, one last time from the top, we were switching focus, and it was back to Whiterun. Talking with the steward gets me the quest to stop an assassination attempt on the Jarl's life. Despite the premise, it's a very short and simple quest. First off, we head to the alchemist to take a book that will lead us to our next clue, that being a dead Nord at the stables, who has yet another note pointing us towards the Silent Moon's bandit camp outside of town. I was ready to somehow deal with the bandits here, but I guess reaching this stage of the quest clears them all out. Works for me, so I grab yet another note, and this one literally tells me exactly where the assassin is going to be. He's invisible, so the game gives us a detect life spell to help locate him, but Skyrim being Skyrim, there is a nice big quest marker over his head, making the spell completely unnecessary. My first attempt doesn't go very well as he's fairly healthy, meaning I could be at this for quite a while. Plus, one of the effects of his bow is that he can draw it faster, meaning I have to be very quick with my bashes or I'm going to take an arrow straight to the head. Next go around I waited a day and activated my Berserker Rage, which did help to speed things along. Still not entirely satisfied with the damage output, I just went with the quicker, less heroic option of luring him downstairs and having the guards take care of him instead. With the assassin dead I can loot the bow and the upgrade is substantial. For context, my current bow was doing 8 damage with no perks or archery levels, whereas this one, the Bow of Shadows, has a base damage of 20. It also has the added effect of making me invisible for 30 seconds every time I pull it out, so sneaking past certain encounters could very well be an option. As expected, with this damage upgrade I can finally get the ball rolling as I can output enough damage to get past Vilkus and begin on my path to scamming free block lessons out of my colleagues. To make this as painless as possible, I just stick to Ayala's Radiant Quest when I have to. I know from my werewolf run a few weeks ago that almost all of her quests just have you go to someone's house and kill a leveled creature, which once again in my case is a single wolf. Considering all I have killed so far as wolves, this is a very great indicator on just how much better the Bow of Shadow is over the hunting bow. It's now time for Dustman's Cairn with Farkas, and like always I try to help out where I can, but in the end Farkas is more than happy to kill all the Silverhand by himself. The Draugr at the end though prove a little too much for him and he goes down. While my damage is better, it is probably not going to get me through all of these Draugr alone. With that in mind, I think it's time that I ended this little charade of wondering how I'm ever going to get enough damage to make the bow bashing viable. This entire time I have been holding back, so now is as good a time as any to show you a fun little glitch that I have been using for my bow builds for as far back as I can remember. Push the right trigger in to draw an arrow and at any point from once the animation starts, press X to cancel the shot. As soon as you do this, push the left trigger to do a bow bash and voila, your bow bashing now, for some reason, does the same damage as if you were using the bow normally. This can technically be faster than just firing arrows once you get the timing down. The only downside is of course the lack of range. On top of the damage output of the bashing now being exceptionally better than it was before, it also doesn't drain your stamina. Granted you still do need at least a single point to use the bash, it just won't use any of your stamina. Also, doing things this way levels your archery skill as opposed to block, so this means we can invest in the archery perks to increase our damage a bit further. The only noticeable drawback of this is that the bash no longer stuns enemies. Granted, it's a small price to pay for the increased killing power, plus later down the archery tree we can pick up a perk that adds a chance to stagger people with arrows, and wouldn't you know it, this little glitch can trigger the perk as well. 
With the last of the Draugr taken care of, me and Farkas return, and I get brought into the doghouse. Now, I don't need the block skill increases anymore, however, Ayala is an expert level archery trainer, and the same exploit works on her with the free training, so it is still worth it to complete the quest line to pick her up at some point. For now though, I do still want more levels, and the fastest way to go about that is with the same glitch, and just use Feindel and Riverwood instead. He will only train you up to level 50, but that's still ridiculously good considering all the lessons are free. With a few extra levels of overkill, let's just call it what it is, I make my way back up to Bleak Falls Barrow, and begin getting my revenge on the bandits who outnumbered me earlier. I haven't mentioned it yet, but the assassin from before also had ebony arrows on him, so I sold all but one of them before getting the training from Findel, and just had that single arrow equipped to get the extra damage from it. Naturally, since I'm never actually firing the arrows, I never use any of them, and therefore only need the one. Considering the trouble these bandits were going to give me before, this is one of the most cathartic experiences I've ever had in any of these runs. Fun fact by the way, since the game believes we are using the weapon as intended, Yes, that does in fact mean you can get stealth attacks with bow bashing now. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. The Draugr were all dealt with easy enough, just look at how quickly I dealt with the Overlord at the end. It's not absurd damage just yet, but let's keep in mind I still have a little secret weapon in my back pocket at all times, that being my Berserker Rage. Before going to take on Dragon number 1, I decided to optimise my build just a little bit better. For starters, I went and changed to the Thief Standing Stone to increase my archery skill 20% faster, as well as going to some traders and purchasing a Hunter's Backpack for another 10% damage increase, as well as an Iron Helmet of Major Archery for a further 25% increase. That means the bow now deals 48 damage, plus the 20 from the Ebony Arrow. Needless to say, I am laughably overprepared for the first Dragon fight. Did I need to use my Rage? Nope, but it sure felt great in the moment. Obviously next up was the Greybeards, but I was enjoying the par trip and didn't want it to end, so before that I wanted to finish up the Companion's questline. I went into great detail about all of this in the aforementioned Werewolf video, and seeing how it was my last Skyrim video before this one, I don't really want to repeat myself. I just do more Radiant quests for Ayala, find out I got that dog in me, make sure to just wait out that phase of my life, and then go on mission after mission after mission into randomly assigned Silverhand bases and caves to clear them out. Seeing how they are basically just bandits with unique swords, this does not take long at all. During my travels between these locations, I was actually attacked by a Dark Brotherhood assassin. He is horrendous at his job though, and now unfortunately for them, they have made the shit list. In no time at all we free Codlock from his wolf, and for good measure I do the same. The only real drawback of being a werewolf is you can never get the 10% skill increases from the well rested bonus, something I never really use, so it wasn't necessary, but I still did it anyway. With that over with I take Ayala as my friend and start abusing said benefits. I get all the way to archery level 75 here, which allows me to get the perk I spoke about before that will allow me to stun some enemies, as well as a 30% increase to my draw speed. This adds on to the 20% faster draw speed of the Bow of Shadows, and as a result, my DPS has went up dramatically. Going hand in hand with that, I also picked up the Ranger perk, which basically allows me to walk at full speed while the bow is drawn. It's not a huge upgrade, as it's not like I'm keeping the bow fully drawn all that much, but it should at least mean if I'm closing the gap on someone, or they're trying to back away from me, that I won't slow down briefly before each attack, which was a minor inconvenience up until now. I was lucky enough to test out all of my newly acquired skills right away, as while I was travelling, I was ambushed by another dragon. Again, raging green monster overkills on full display, but how could I not? I feel like a lot of people really enjoy seeing how fast their builds can kill dragons, and today I am no different. The reason I'm even exploring this part of the map is because I was searching for Stony Creek Cave. In the base game it's just a random short cave with a few bandits inside that no doubt simply exists as a location for raiding quests. With the Anniversary Edition however, it is now home to Ruin's Edge, another Creation Club bow. I wasn't sure what its damage was like so I figured I could spare the time to pick it up, just in case it was better than the Bow of Shadows. Long story short, it wasn't. Granted, it does have a chance to inflict one of a few different enchantments with every hit, so that could prove better in the long run, but for now I am more than happy with my physical damage output, besides I would probably miss the draw speed. The Frost Troll got what he deserved on the way up the mountain, no more, no less. In fact, after my time with the Greybeards, and seeing how I would need to pass through it on my way to Ustengrav, I made a point to go back and deal with all of the Frost Trolls at Valkig. I may not be using them how I initially thought, but they were idiots to think I would let them live. 
That goes for the Draugr Deathlord as well, by the way. Kinda crazy how fast I went from help I do no damage to essentially becoming a CQC master with a ranged weapon no less. I mean, look at this, he didn't even survive for 10 seconds. There wasn't much to talk about in Ustengrab either. The only mildly concerning part was the Draugr with frost magic. If they drain all of my stamina, I am left without a way to fight back until it regens. For now, it's not an issue, but it got me thinking about the first Alduin battle, as we all know how much he likes to spam that Frost Breath. No point worrying about that now, so I wipe out the Draugr and a handful of creepy crawlies, grab Delphine's note, and then go off to do something completely different. One day, there will be a video where I don't get immediately distracted, but it won't be anytime soon. I took a cart to Riften and embodied the Stealth Archer Demon inside me once more, as I took out Growl of the Kind, and then reported my good deed to Aventus. One snooze later, and I'm squatting at Astrid's. Not one for being woken up from his naps, I then assassinate the assassin in cold blood before freeing the prisoners. All of which are not nice people, but what do I really care, they are all going to cease to exist the instant I open this door. After getting an ironic assignment from Commander Maru, I overprepare once more by blowing up my iron helmet and giving its enchantment to most of my gear, that being a ring, a new helmet and some gloves. At a 15% increase each, that now brings me to a whopping 45% more archery damage. With all of those, it took me exactly a minute to kill the final members of the Dark Brotherhood. I know this because I started the slaughter by activating my power, and then pretty much the second I dealt with Old Man Festus, the ability ended. They were mostly two shots, the Argonian took a few more, so good for him I suppose. The best part of all is now I can steal their clothes and sell them for a tidy profit. That's on top of the 3000 gold Maro hands me for a job well done as well. I feel like it should have at least been 5,000, you know, 1,000 gold per head, but whatever. Alright, now it was time to meet up with Delphine and see how I would deal with the rest of the main quest. You wanna all take a guess how the fight with Salokunir the pacifist turned out? Seems about right. Keeping this pace going, it was off to the embassy. I just hand Malborn all of my gear because I have terrible short term memory and would no doubt forget to grab the leftovers from Delphine later. While I was in the Winking Skeever, I also tossed some of my money to the bards for my own amusement. Our hero, our hero claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the Dragonborn comes. The only issue I can think of when running into the embassy was getting obliterated by their magic, as I have zero defense against it whatsoever. Well, as they say, a good offense is a good defense, so I do just that by planting my bow directly into their brains. The most interesting thing about the embassy this time around was what I can only describe as the sound of machinery whenever I entered the prison area. I have no idea why it sounded like this, I mean it stopped the instant I left. I have never run into a sound bug like this. I take out my pent up confusion and mild aggression on the frost troll, I swear you'd think they're part of the Omerdas with how much I'm slaughtering them today, before making a roundabout trip to Delphine and going to play in the sewers. While my archery skill is yet to reach 100, I have taken every single damage perk available to me, so I don't think I need to go over the sewer escape with Esbern and the handful of Thalmor that show up, especially considering there are less of them here than there were in the embassy. What really showed off the strength of this build if you ask me was when I was on my way to Alduin's wall, I ran into two giants and managed to take them both on along with their mammoth afterwards and win the fight with little to zero problems. Again, yes, big angry power up helps, but even still I would never have been in a position to do this with the normal bashing. If I had stuck to just that, the run would probably already be over as I would have shotgunned the entire main story and probably skipped as many encounters as possible. This all happened in the vicinity of Rorikstead by the way, so seeing how I was already here, I paid the optional encounter with Alduin a visit. Figured I could always use the extra dragon soul for no reason. Well, Alduin was clearly terrified of me by this point because as soon as I approached, he stopped the resurrection and bailed on his half reanimated friend. I tried waiting, fast travelling and saving and reloading, but nothing I did would free this dragon from his torment, so I guess he is destined to be stuck under that mound of dirt. I then helped Delphine and Esbern welcome the Force Worm to the modern age, and then got to work painting the floor with my blood. Before scaling the second half of the Greybeard's backyard, I made my way to grab the Elder Scroll. It is nice for once to actually be on a somewhat even playing field with the Falmer, although that's probably more to do with the fact that I'm doing this quest at around level 20 as opposed to level 6 or 7 like most of my other runs. I flexed on a few of the Centurions down here as well as making sure to grab the shield that essentially gave birth to this channel, before doing the world's easiest puzzle of pushing buttons from right to left and preparing myself for Alduin Phase 1. 
Attempt number one, and while it may not look like it given the damage I'm taking, I actually think it went quite well. At the end of the day, I am basically a well spec archery build with some enchanted equipment to help maximise damage, and what I can only assume from how consistently good it has been, an end game viable bow to boot. So the damage on my end is there, and I have some potions of resist fire and frost to help offset the damage. What I really should have been doing was standing by one of his wings, that way I wouldn't need to worry about the damage over time from the fire, or the stamina draining properties of the frost. I also should have been making more use of the normal bash to stop said breath attacks, as they will cancel the animations, but yet I rarely did. Still, I was able to get him down literally one more hit, but unfortunately, he get off his meteor shout, and of course, one hits the ground and wipes me out this second before I can land the final hit. At least I know it is more than possible. Despite all of that advice I just blurted out, I basically used none of it during the second round. The only real difference this time around wasn't even up to me. I just got more critical procs thanks to my perks, and it helped to take him down before he even had a chance to do much damage. I wish there was more to say on that, but it really was just down to dumb luck. What I also should have done, come to think of it, was wait for 24 hours before the fight so that I could have used my Berserker Rage, as it was still on cooldown from when I was down in Black Rage. Well, up next is the Peace Council. A few comments I have gotten over the years have stated that I don't have to finish the Civil War quest line to skip the Peace Council, I only need to do the Defence or Siege of Whiterun quests. Okay, so I went and joined up with the Legion, since I sided with Hadvar at the beginning, and made my way through the Jagged Crown and defending Whiterun quests. It only took me about 45 minutes. I then returned to the main quest, and oh look at that, I still have to attend the Council anyway. So that was a fucking lie. It's not a huge deal, it's just so boring and it's the longest 10 minutes of your life. Regardless, it threw it capture my best friend and then fly off to Skaldafen where I continue to demonstrate how much these dragons are. What? <laughs> we all know there isn't much left in my way, so let's just wrap this up. I enter Sovngarde and prepare for the fight with Sun, if you could even call it that. He manages to get a single hit in during the beatdown, before sending me off to headbutt the three warriors and beginning the final screaming match before the second phase of Alduin. This time I came prepared and made sure I was ready to get mad at the drop of a hat. I also take some of my own advice this time. Eventually. I spend the first part of the fight at his head, still seemingly not learning from my mistakes, before very slowly moving over to his side and focusing him down from there while the rest of my backup seems to have his attention on the other side. He never manages to get back into the air after being grounded the first time, so he was completely at our mercy, and sadly for him, nobody seems to believe in that in Skyrim. With the final bow bash delivered, he gets all dramatic for a moment before gloriously exploding and being left to the judgement of the Elder Gods. With Alduin dead, I return to the throat of the world, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Skyrim by only bow bashing. So like I said, it was very similar to the shield bash, so it always would have been possible. Sure, it could be seen as bending the rules by using the glitch for most of the run, but in the end, I feel like that that was a much more fun way to do this kind of video, because if I just stuck to the normal bow bashing, the damage output would have been so low that as I said earlier, I probably would have just ran past every encounter that wasn't a mandatory one. Regardless, that's going to be the next challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like. If you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to our videos every week. My name is Norbert, I'll see you all in the next video.